you over to the Dune de Pilates, or Du Pilates. If you see some of the trees that are there, they, they look actually burnt out. It's because, there was, I believe, there was forest fires back in 2022. So there's some of the devastation from the fires. Good morning, my name's Andy, and this is the Chickster, and together we are... Andrew and Gillian. And the Chickster. <laughs> anyway, today we're going to go visit the largest sand dune in Europe. As this is the last video in our, in our series around Western Europe, uh, we're going to talk about a few things like how far we've travelled, uh, the costs of fuel. And I'll be telling you about my five top favourite gadgets that I found useful on our trip. So for the last time in this series, uh, come along with us and enjoy our day going round the largest sand dune in Europe. Well, this is us walking up to the entranceway towards Dune du Pilat. Oh, this looks like a little cafe area. Might have to stop there a little bit later. Have a drink or something. It's just through the gap there, you can just see the edge of the dune. And obviously a few shops are, so you get all your dune related memorabilia. I know this is a bit random, but we'll do the first of Gillian's top gadgets. Gillian, what is your first top gadget? My first top gadget is my Ridge Monkey. And why is that? Because it's so versatile, I can do, I can cook anything in it. Fry stuff, omelettes, st ingredients for wraps, fantastic. Right then, what's gadget number two? Number two is my toaster, it's fantastic. It's really versatile. <laughs> easy and flat to put away um, it's just great to use on top of the burner and here all the cheering in the background that's all people who are really impressed with your toaster Gillian <laughs> and what's gadget number three the fan it's double headed and it's brilliant when it's really hot it just it just cools me down it's really good really handy to have where it is in the cab and it blasts just opposite you doesn't it, it just does. so yeah. you're straight yeah yeah, yeah. fantastic and we're just getting up towards the sand dune now, but before we do it, Gillian, what's gadget number four? Gadget number four is my kettle. It's fantastic. It's really um, handy to use because I'm the only one that drinks tea or coffee. Well, what's tea, special about the kettle, Gillian? It's very small and you just put the right enough water in. It's like a little camping kettle, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It's super. Yeah. Absolutely super. And the final one, Gillian, what's gadget number five? Gadget number five is my footrest in the front of the cab. Because the seat's quite high, my feet dangled and they ached. How strange that might be, but they did. And Andrew bought me a, a footrest and it's amazing. It's, it's so comfy. Excellent. Thanks a lot, Gillian, for all your list of top five gadgets. This is just, a, just on the edge of the dune, isn't it? It is, yeah. And uh, if I spin you around, and you can have a look, and there you are, there's the dune. And obviously, uh, you can also go the cheating way up the steps, which is quite a Gucci idea. But I think we're going to try and go up that way. Well, I am anyway. I don't think Chile will probably go up the steps. But it goes round. But if you can see down, we're already quite a long way up. Which way are you going, Julian? Are you going to go up the steps yeah, or are you going to go yeah. up the, the other bit? I'm going to go up the steps. Oh, yeah. All right then. Yeah. Right, well, uh, I'm definitely going to try and climb it. Right, OK, I'll meet so you at the top. I'll see you at the top then. Right, I'm going to climb this. It's going to take a while, but it's all right. In fact, this is how enthusiastic I am. I'm going to run. Oh, oh, God, no. I'll tell you what, I'm not going to run. Blood my neck. <laughs> this is hard work. I tell you, I should have gone up the steps. Oh, God. God, every time you make a step, you go back about three inches. Oh, God. My legs are killing me. Oh, oh. Still got a bit of a way to go, like. Give us a wave. All right. Nearly there. The final bit here now. I'll tell you something, I think I weigh about, well, about a stone heavier than when I set off. And if you think that sounds strange, it's because I've got half a stone of sand in each of my shoes. Oh, oh, this is just, just Oh, just uh, so me anyway, just getting over the top. Oh, look at that over there. There's a nice place to live. 
Look at that. wander up here, oh, a big group of kids come up, I don't think she's seen me yet, although well, she must have done, I'm the daft Ollie that walked all the way up the hill, I was actually, in. did you count the steps? No I didn't, I was concentrating on just getting up past the steps, Yeah. And I had to stop at one bit just to catch my breath. It's a bit windy isn't it? Well, just a little, just a yeah, little. Yeah, I have to get a bit closer to you so they can hear me because it's a bit, it's a bit loud, isn't it? Yeah, it yeah. is. But the scenery is beautiful. It is, isn't it? I mean, just look down behind you. I know. It's, it's, I know. It's beautiful. I know. Look at that. <laughs> Julian, tell us some fun facts about June du Pilot or Pilat. Hang on, Julian. Tell us some fun facts about. June du Pilat. Right. Um, <clears throat> it's three kilometres long. It's 107 metres high. It's nearly visited by two million uh, people a year. And it shifts uh, five metres a year as well. Well done. That's that's interesting facts. Well, you heard the stories about ostriches, Julian. Yeah. Yeah. Well, do you know ostriches when they're supposed to get scared? Don't they put their head in the sand, don't they? Yes, they do. Do you think that's true? Do you think that's a true story? I don't know. It's not. The reason the stories came about is because ostriches lay their eggs in the sand. They lay in the sand because the sand keeps. Them. Sorry if it's a bit. There's bloody sand blowing all over the place. But ostriches lay their eggs in the sand to keep the eggs warm. All right. So when ostriches, when they need to move the eggs, what they do is they put the head. I don't know what that is. But anyway, no. <laughs> but when ostriches put their heads in the sand to move the uh, eggs round, that's when people can look at them and think they're putting their heads in the sand. Right. And that's that's that's, that's why. You but know. ostriches don't actually put their heads in the sand. Yeah, but but that's it's an interesting fact, it isn't is it? Actually, yeah. That's a really good fact for you actually. Well that was brilliant, that's it, best part of climbing up the sand dune, running down it and of course you can't hurt yourself can you? Right Julian, now I've got to do the most important thing, hold this for me. Okay. And I'm going to go over here. Oh, I'm empty my shoes out. Oh. Ready? Yep. <laughs> Jesus! I know. I How much? There you go. Blimey. I know, bloody hell. I can't believe how much sand's in there. No. Can't you, you brought half the dune with you? I know, that's it. <laughs> As promised, is our fuel stats for going around Europe. Uh, this is the number of miles we've done and kilometres. This is the amount of fuel we've used. And finally, this is our miles per gallon, which is not bad for a 24-year-old 24-year-old camper van. So we're really quite chuffed. Well, I can't believe it's finally come to an end. I think this is the end of our, our trip round uh, Western Europe. And we'd just like to say from both of us, thank you very much for coming along with us and uh, hopefully we'll catch up with you next time. Yeah. So for the last time, it's goodbye from you. It's goodbye from me. And it's goodbye from both of us. Bye. Bye. Let's cruise. Okay. I think you said a Mundo before. Oh, a Mundo. Let's cruise. A Mundo. <laughs>